We have our uh, third uh, talk coming up. We have uh, mobile audiovisual broadcasting from field sites and beyond. Uh, this will be uh, presented by uh, Mike Toyon from NASA Ames. Uh, Mike is an AV uh, production specialist at NASA Ames Research Center. Uh, prior to this, he was a media specialist at the uh, California Institute of Telecommunications and Information, or CalIT2. Uh, he has vast experience in a variety of audiovisual technologies, ranging from uh, HD video conferencing to spatialized surround sound and to uh, 4K digital stereoscopic cinema. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. Teo. Thank you. Just give me a second to get fired up here. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me here at this conference. Um, my name is Mike Tone, and I work for the NASA Astrobiology Institute, also known as the NEI, where we study the origins, evolution, distribution, and future of life in the universe. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so the, the NEI is what we call a virtual institute. It consists of a core group of about 10 people at NASA Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California, and we support a distributed group of competitively, competitively selected science teams from all over the country, including universities and other NASA centers. So each of these teams, once selected, is awarded a large grant to fund their research over a five-year period through a cooperative agreement with NASA. As of now, we have 15 teams distributed across the United States, as well as seven international partners. Now, since our teams are widely distributed across the country, we rely heavily on collaborative tools and networking technology, including video conferencing, desktop sharing software such as Adobe Connect and WebEx, and large format displays such as Hyperwalls. However, our approach is very much social and people-based. Anyone can purchase fancy tech, but the real power of these tools lies in how well they foster social and organizational relationships. And at NEI, we're not only interested in allowing our teams to communicate to us, but also to each other. So the field of astrobiology is very much a scientific community as it is a scientific discipline. By joining the NEI, you don't only get access to great NASA and NEI resources, but also access to other great NEI teams. As you can see in this diagram, we strive to optimize the balance between central support and enabling the end user to make their own connections and collaborations. So in the collaborative technology department, we help support online science seminars, focus groups, and what we like to call workshops without walls, events in which the entire global astrobiology community can meet and interact online as if they're in the same room. In these special workshops, we try to put an emphasis on discussion versus presentations, because that's the real power in the meeting. So I joined the NEI in the Collaborative Technology Department about a year and a half ago, after working at this very institute for a, quite a long time. And one of the first things that I noticed while becoming familiar with the NEI operations is that the collaborative tools that we used every day were getting lighter, smaller, faster, more mobile. Big setbox appliances were becoming apps. High bandwidth services were becoming Wi-Fi and 3G, 4G uh, accessible. And it started getting me thinking, where couldn't you broadcast from? Have we reached the point where we can really communicate from anywhere to anywhere? If we have cell coverage, this is absolutely true. But what if you don't have cell coverage? And about this time, I heard about another NASA program called IT Labs. This is a program put on by all the CTOs of NASA, all the centers, with the basic purpose of allowing employees the opportunity to propose IT-related projects that could benefit the entire agency. So I put the, forth, uh, the following proposal to IT Labs. Can we further leverage our existing technology and infrastructure with the use of satellite networking technology? Do we already have the ability to broadcast from anywhere to anywhere? So who would this benefit? Well, for one, scientific expeditions could have two-way HD video conferencing communication from their field site to their lab. We have people in the Mojave, the Arctic, all over the world. They could have live analysis of real-time findings with experts from everywhere. 
they could essentially bring fewer people on their expedition while having more eyes at their site. The same expeditions could also share and transmit their data to their labs while at their site. Perhaps early analysis will reveal errors that can be corrected or more points of interest that can be explored the following day. And one of the best opportunities for exploring this capability lies in education and public outreach. Now this is the avenue that I'll be exploring while simultaneously making the case for all three applications. So our NEI team located at NASA Ames has a great EPO program in place with Red Bluff High School, which is outside Lassen Volcanic National Park. I feel like Mark Rubio up here. Excuse me. This team used some of their NEI funds to propose a video conferencing unit for the school, and senior NASA scientists and researchers used this unit to teach a high school course in astrobiology. In addition to that, the same team visits Red Bluff once a month to take the students on sample collecting trips to Lassen Volcanic National Park to show the students how much we can learn about other planets in our solar system by examining extreme environments right here on Earth. So I have the following idea. What if I tagged along with the NAI Ames team on one of their field expeditions to Lassen with the students at Red Bluff High School, and we broadcasted that experience out to classrooms all over the country? allowing more students to experience this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I sat down with the Ames team and I breathlessly laid out this crazy proposal, much like I'm doing to you now, and after my lengthy explanation, they had a single question for me. Can you do this in the snow? So the plan is to drive in Alaska National Park, right where you can see here. Now this looks a lot different than it will in the winter, where this access road here will actually be completely covered in snow. We will then put on snowshoes, and take about 150 pounds of satellite equipment in a snow sled and snowshoe one mile up to Sulphur Works. And from there, I'll be setting up the audiovisual transmission. So the setup will include a generator, satellite uplink equipment, a video camera, wireless microphone, and a laptop. Our signal is going to go up into space, get bounced off a satellite, get picked up at a ground station at NASA Ames, and plugged into a local internet service provider. From there, we'll be able to use video, a desktop video conferencing application, to connect to NEI's video conferencing bridge, where my trusty colleagues will be plugging this into Adobe Connect, which will allow us to communicate with all of these parties across the country, different schools in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, as well as launch dynamic content using Adobe Connect, such as extra graphics, movies, interactive polls. So at the site, while hydrothermal vents will be steaming in the background, we'll be conducting an interactive educational program on astrobiology. The main theme is to explain why scientists study the geological and biological features of extreme environments on Earth and how that relates to the search for life on Mars. To take it a step further, we're also going to demonstrate how scientists examine and measure these features and how that relates to how Curiosity, our Mars Science Laboratory rover, does the same on the Red Planet. So to demonstrate this, the Red Bluff High School students who will be with us at Lassen Volcanic National Park will be designated as the rover team while the online students in the other classrooms will act as the mission control team. So the goal of the mission control team is to determine if a bubbling mud pot at Sulphur Works could support life. And they're going to go about this the exact same way we would go about it with the rover on Mars. So they must determine this by giving commands to the rover team to take certain measurements, such as pH and temperature, and then report back that data to mission control via the satellite video conference. So in addition, the rover team will also have with them an actual replica of Kemen, one of the science instruments that is on board Curiosity. And these students are the only students in the whole world who have this kind of access to this instrumentation. So it's very exciting. So all these interactions, while supporting the EPO activity, will also be testing the technical capability of interactions over satellite link. We'll be able to learn the extent of latency introduced by the system, the frequency of packet loss, the reliability and true cap capacity of the data stream, et cetera. So our findings, therefore, therefore, will be able to comment on all three areas mentioned earlier, science, data, and education and public outreach. And as you can probably tell by the tense of my language, our broadcast actually hasn't taken place yet, but it's actually happening next week um, on March 19th. So I would like to share with you a short video I made from our previous survey trips, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions.
Hi, I'm Mike Kubo. We're here today at Lassen Volcanic National Park with the Astrobiology Internship Program, testing for the satellite broadcast in March, and we hope you can join us. So, as with any sort of big team operation, um, it takes a team. So, I want to thank the NASA Astrobiology Institute, NASA IT Labs for funding it, the great NASA satellite communications team, Red Bluff High School, Alaska Volcanic National Park, and you guys for having me. And I'll happy to answer any questions, technical or otherwise. Sure. I'm curious um, if there's a school someplace that may want to participate in this sort of thing. Um, who do they contact? Would it be you? Um, for, so for this one, we've kind of have a closed um, yeah, sort of I'd test imagine. case. We're going to do three yeah. schools, um, Red Bluff. Um, so while some students are at the park, other students who couldn't get into the internship program will be at Red Bluff. Okay. And we have one in Wisconsin, one in Pennsylvania. And this is our first time doing this. We want to make sure okay. it's yeah. successful. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then later we'll open it up and see how many schools we can include in, in doing another time. OK. Do you have like a, a time frame for that type of thing, maybe? Um, well, actually, or, or the next round of IT Labs funding is the proposal phases right now. So I'm, I will be reapplying to sort of take this to the next level. So okay. Okay. we won't know until about six months. So. OK, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So you mentioned that you had to bring about 150 pounds of equipment with you, or will have to, uh, yes. to do this. Do you have a vision for the future of having like much less than that come up with you on an excursion like this where you're in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, it'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> um, so the problem is basically the satellite transmission. We're using a one meter dish, which is fairly big. That's about 30 pounds. Um, and that's about as small as you can get while still getting the bandwidth that you need. So it, we're getting about a 2 megahertz uh, bandwidth, and it's about 2 megabits per second duplex, if that means anything to anyone. Um, and to get bigger, or to get uh, smaller, you'd have to go low, even lower bandwidth. And that's pretty much as low as you want to go when you're trying to do something, especially HD. That's about as, as compressed as you can get. So I would love to do that. Um, this team, though, is fantastic. They've gone in the Arctic. They were part of the response team to Katrina, so they would helicopter in with huge generators and and gigantic dishes. Um, so this is actually quite contained to them. So, um, so the best we can do is get a sled. We have a rigid tow rope, so it doesn't take our legs out going downhill, and that's basically the best we can do. So, thanks. Any other questions? All right. Thanks again. I appreciate it.